Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the shop. Today's video, I'm gonna be making yet another metal and wood frame gate. You know, I do make a lot of these, but they're all different in their own way, including this one. This one, I'm gonna call a mini gate. It's gonna be about 41 inches wide and about 31 inches tall, and I'm gonna dress it up with all kinds of decor to make it look interesting. So let's get started on today's project. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, so we're starting off with some one by two rectangular tubing right here. Uh, this is 063. You can see that I'm just cutting the end off of that material right there. It has an impression or a little indent on the end right there uh, from the factory. All right, once I got that done, I got some nice straight clean metal to work with and I'm just cutting the posts as I need them uh, for the right length here. They're gonna be the same size as the frame. And once I got those out of the way, then it's just uh, turn the table on the uh, on the evolution to a 45 degree and cut off the four pieces that I need. You know, I've, the evolution is a great software to stuff like this. That, uh, I've got a couple of these now and, and uh, they work really well for me. A company with the Champion cutoff blade, you know, this thing here uh, literally has thousands of cuts on it. And uh, still cutting strong, uh, those things work pretty good. All right, just finishing up the four pieces here. Just getting them, uh, two of them the same length and the other two the different length to match the distance of the shape for the gate, which is roughly, I think, 44 by 33, something like that. All right, over the welding table. Got my table dogs right there. We'll first set the first two on 90 degrees and then clamp those in place. And then with the other two, I'll just line those up and clamp them in as well. You know, I like doing this. Uh, I like getting as much as I can clamped down. Uh, prior to welding double check everything for square diagonally right here Everything is right on the money and now I'm ready to go ahead and start welding things together operating off the Pro Pulse, uh 220 MTS right here. It's my go-to machine especially for stuff like this 35 thousandths wire and 90 10 gas 90% argon 10% CO2 and I'm just going around and welding everything I can on this side right here. All right, I got that all done on this side. And now I'm just going to come back uh, with a flap disc and, and kind of clean up the edges, clean up the welds uh, so I can flip it around the other side and, and weld, finish doing the welding right there. You know, I use these, uh, these Mercer uh, flap discs. This is a ceramic flap disc. I have all kinds of different ones from Mercer. This is a ceramic 60 grit. 60 grit is my go-to. Uh, it does a good job of removing metal and yet doesn't leave a lot of uh, a grinding marks. So it, uh, it works really well for me. All right, with that all the way, this is some three quarter inch by eighth inch thick flat bar stock. And I'm gonna go ahead and weld this around the perimeter and this is what's going to retain the wood later on uh, it's going to hold the wood in it's going to be the, on the front face of the gate right here just cutting them to the right length and these mag squares gosh i can't say enough about these things i, I got them on amazon and uh, they're fairly inexpensive and i probably have 10 of them and uh, they work good especially in situations like this right here for holding stuff flush to the outside. This is just what I needed to do. And that works really good. You know, the idea here is I'm just coming along and just kind of tacking, if you will, all four pieces uh, in place to be sure I get them right where I want them to be and they're, and they're nice and flush. And then I'll come back uh, when that's all done here, you'll see, and add a, a weld to it, probably about an inch long. Uh, you know, just taking those tacks and just add it onto those tacks right there, roughly an inch. It doesn't need much. We're just trying to hold these, uh, you know, pieces of flat bar, you know, in place. They're not going anywhere. They're just retaining the wood. 
you know, one thing too about this is, uh, you know, I powder coat just about everything I do now. So the powder coating, the process I go is, is uh, uh, sandblast, prime, and powder coat. And once you do all that, it's a pretty thick finish on the outside. And, uh, you know, it hides any kind of imperfections or, that you may have, that you may have gotten grinding or welding or whatever. Works well for me. Now, you can always paint, prime and paint as well. Uh, works good, just doesn't quite get as thick as, uh, as it normally does. And, um, you know, where, where powder coat is uh, much durable, lasts much longer. All right, I'm working with the posts here right now. And what I like to do is, is seal off the ends, one end of the post. I like to leave the bottom side open and seal off the top. Uh, now this uh, is to allow for any kind of condensation that may build up in the post or any water that may get in through the anchoring system uh, on the sides of the post. You'll see that here in a minute. I drill a hole in there so I can get a bolt in, on the inside and I put a rubber plug on the outside. Here's a good little tip right here. Here's my trimmable flap disc from Mercer. And you guys uh, may have heard me talk about that. Everyone seems to want to know what a trimmable flap disc is. Well, here's a good example. Once you wear a flap disc down, most cases you throw it away. But Mercer provides a flap disc here that's trimmable. They give you a quarter inch mark a couple times on there, put it up against a sharp piece of metal, cut off that quarter inch, and you've got a new flap disc that lasts um, just like a brand new flap disc. You get twice or sometimes three times the, the, the length out of, uh, out of a flap disc. Works pretty good. All right, here I'm drilling these uh, inch and an eighth holes in here. And the reason is it's an inch and an eighth is like I said, it allows me plenty of room to get the anchoring system, which I use screw anchors uh, from Hilti, uh, anchoring to the concrete wall that this is going on to. And then I'll be, once that's done, then I have an inch and an eighth rubber cap that I use uh, that, that plugs that hole. All right, and so there's the post, and I've got some wood shims in there, and I'm getting ready to weld on these uh, weld on hinges or bullet hinges, uh, whatever you want them to be called, whatever they call them, different names. And these things can be tricky at times as well. What you want to do is line them up. Uh, they got to be lined up perfectly straight, and uh, I found out the hard way. Sometimes if you don't. The hinges bind a little bit. You'll see me here. I've tacked it. I'm checking. Everything is working really good. And then I'm going to come back and weld them in. Now these hinges provide a flat spot on each side of the tube of the hinge. And that's all you need to weld. You don't have to get carried away and weld more into that. It's not designed for that. It's not going to work. It's a, it's a bad day. So just stick to welding on the flat spot that they provide and you'll be good to go. This is the thumb latch right here. I'm just getting everything adjusted right. And this is just a simple little thumb latch. And I'm just taking it down, uh, I don't know, three or four inches down from the top. I don't want that thumb latch to be exposed at the top. I'm also had, having to add a little bit to the inside right here. Uh, the actual bar that latches to the thumb latch here needs to be set back because this is only a one inch wide post. And there's not a lot of room. Uh, this is going up against the block wall. I don't have a lot of room right here and you can see I actually um, these little posts have a little round bar on the end ball on the end I should say you can see I can cut that ball off because I need every bit of room I can get in order for this to work on the wall that I'm mounting it on so a little back piece of uh, flat bar stock to, to weld that uh, bar to and that's, that's adjustable in the field as well all right there it is, complete, over to the powder coaters, got it done, and the wood of choice here is 1x6 Naughty Cedar uh, Tongue and Groove, and that's what I'm going to be using right here. This is just some Barathane uh, Classic Wood Stain, I think it was Dark Walnut, and uh, this is the first coat that I'm just applying on with a sponge applicator here. I'm going to apply this here pretty liberally and uh, the first coat and then I'm going to wipe it off and then I'm going to come back with the second coat and get inside the tongue and groove and get it in all the areas that I that I didn't get before and uh, I like having a dark uh, you'll see with the you know we want this to end up being fairly dark but the, the first the first what I like the first stain of what I like to do is put this on and then I like to uh, wipe off the residual you'll see me do it right here with a cloth 
and then I'll come back and hit everything again and have it completely sealed. You do this on both sides. And then I came back with, with this uh, product right here. This is from Bear. It's a waterproofing sealer stain. And I hit two coats of that on there, and that sealed this up really nice. And now it's going to be pretty weatherproof. Now, you see I had that one-inch piece of wood right there. Uh, the reason is is because I got the same thing on the other side right here. And I'm dry fitting everything, checking everything, and it's going to fit right in there. You want to balance your wood out on the frame. You know, if you, you don't want to just start stacking them in there and have it two inch piece at the very end you want it to look good from the front you want to be sure that uh, your balance uh, out on both sides looks even all right back with some three quarter inch angle iron and what I'm doing right here is pre-drilling um, I'm using some self tapping screws to hold this angle iron in place and the clamps to push the angle iron down tight against the wood to, to be sure it's it's nice and tight and then um, drilling a 964 pre-drill and then I'm using these self tappers I'm just kind of helping the self tappers out a little bit with the pre-drilling and then I like vacuuming up all the metal shavings right away otherwise it just gets messy and I'm just repeating the same process all the way around the cardboard on there I'm using is I found a couple of times in the past I didn't use a cardboard and the chuck spins around and mars the wood and so I learned that the hard way. It's all about living and learn, learning here. And so from now on, I use a piece of uh, cardboard there and, and I don't have those issues. Except over here, I got carried away and I started drilling without the cardboard. Luckily, there was no damage done right there and I caught it and then I went ahead and got back to the cardboard there. Just repeated the process all the way around to finish that up. All right, and there it is for the front side, and that's what we're looking at right there. That turned out pretty good. Now, this is just a little added touch uh, that I'm putting to the front of this. Is some round discs, some rustic type of round discs. Now, typically, I get all my stuff at King Metals. They didn't have this particular product that I was looking for. I ended up getting this on Amazon. Uh, drilling a 16th inch hole and and then just driving them in and they just stayed securely in place and I did the same thing on the other side right here just laying out be sure I get everything exactly where it was on the other side so it looks nice and uniform you know it just gives the gate a little added uh, look to it a little character to it and it just I think it just makes for a good finished product all right there you go that was a fun little project right there. Like I said, mini gate. This could be done in any size gate that you have. Uh, but this particular opening, this is going to work really well. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to check out the website at jimbosgarage.com. Check us out on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next video. Welcome to Jimbo's Garage.